Señoras y señores, muy buenas noches para todos. Bienvenidos al Salón Conferencias de Palacio de Nariño. Saludamos a los televidentes que nos siguen en directo a esta hora de la noche a través del canal institucional y vía streaming en www.presidencia.gov.com. Luego de la reunión entre el señor presidente de la República de Colombia, doctor Juan Manuel Santos Calderón, y el secretario de Estado de los Estados Unidos, Rex Tillerson, a continuación la declaración conjunta a la prensa. Así que, señor presidente, muy buenas noches y adelante. Buenas noches. Acabamos de tener una reunión muy provechosa y muy productiva con el secretario de Estado de los Estados Unidos, Rex Tillerson. Una vez más, secretario Tillerson, a usted y a todo su equipo, bienvenidos. Su presencia en nuestro país, al igual que los encuentros que he sostenido con el presidente Trump y el vicepresidente Pence, da cuenta de la importancia de la alianza estratégica que compartimos y se produce además en un momento histórico para nuestro país. Colombia, usted ha podido comprobarlo de primera mano, está avanzando en la construcción de la paz. Este es un proceso complejo, un proceso que toma tiempo y aunque tenemos enormes retos por delante, los frutos se están viendo. El año pasado, 2017, fue el año más tranquilo de nuestra historia reciente. Miles de vidas se han salvado gracias al fin del conflicto. Tenemos la tasa de homicidios más baja en más de cuatro décadas. El campo colombiano, que fue otra víctima de la violencia, hoy jalona el crecimiento de la economía. Y las instituciones del Estado, así como las fuerzas militares y de policía siguen fortaleciendo su presencia en todo el territorio nacional. Además estamos haciendo frente con total contundencia a todas las manifestaciones de violencia y amenazas que no son ajenas a una transición hacia la paz después de un conflicto tan cruel y prolongado. En todo este proceso hemos contado con el apoyo firme y decidido de los Estados Unidos, un apoyo bipartidista, un apoyo efectivo y sin interrupciones. Por eso agradecemos profundamente el respaldo de la administración del presidente Trump en esta etapa crucial de nuestra historia como nación. En esta reunión con el secretario Tillerson, repasamos los diversos temas de nuestra rica agenda binacional, y también le contamos sobre el trabajo que venimos haciendo en temas de interés para los dos países. Conversamos, por ejemplo, sobre el problema mundial de las drogas ilícitas, un tema en el que estamos de acuerdo con usted, secretario Tillerson, nuestros países tienen una responsabilidad compartida. Ni hay oferta sin demanda, ni hay demanda sin oferta. Como parte del diálogo franco y abierto que tenemos, Detallamos las acciones que hemos emprendido en este frente y los logros que estamos alcanzando. Entre el año pasado, el 2017 y lo que va de este año, se han erradicado forzosamente 54 mil hectáreas. Se sobrecumplió la meta y para finales de este año esperamos llegar a las 115 mil hectáreas. Y en materia de sustitución voluntaria, que por primera vez podemos hacer con altas probabilidades de éxito gracias a la paz. Hemos firmado acuerdos colectivos con más de 124 mil familias que dicen poseer cerca de 95 mil hectáreas de cultivos ilícitos. Casi 30 mil, 30 mil de estas familias ya hoy están sustituyendo sus cultivos ilícitos. También hemos alcanzado cifras récord en materia de incautación, que es donde la lucha contra el narcotráfico, y nosotros hemos aprendido en esa lucha, es donde es más efectiva. Por ejemplo, en estos ocho años de gobierno, hemos incautado más de 1.800 toneladas de cocaína, una cifra sin precedentes, mucho más elevada que en los ocho años anteriores. El año pasado 
se incautaron 416 toneladas, cifra récord para un año. El trabajo conjunto entre nuestros dos países está dejando resultados positivos. Tan solo el año pasado, nuestras Fuerzas Armadas, con el apoyo de Estados Unidos, llevaron a cabo más de, seis, de 460 actividades en temas como investigación criminal, antisecuestro, antinarcóticos y la lucha contra la delincuencia organizada transnacional. El apoyo de Estados Unidos a los esfuerzos que venimos haciendo para tener un país libre de minas antipersonal, luego de haber sido el país más minado del mundo entero después de Afganistán, ha sido muy importante. Ya hemos limpiado de minas 185 municipios. El trabajo conjunto también se ha extendido a cooperación judicial, a asistencia legal, a la extradición, a la lucha contra la corrupción. Juntos hemos dado ayuda a Centroamérica en materia de seguridad. Y Colombia ha capacitado a más de 15.000 oficiales de policía de Honduras, de El Salvador, de Guatemala, de Costa Rica, de Panamá, de República Dominicana. Durante la reunión también le compartimos al secretario Tillerson nuestra preocupación por la grave situación que está viviendo el pueblo venezolano. La aguda crisis que atraviesa el vecino país, fruto de la fracasada revolución que abandera el presidente Maduro, tiene repercusiones enormes para Colombia y para toda la región. A la grave situación humanitaria que el régimen dictatorial se niega a reconocer, se suma ahora la convocatoria de elecciones presidenciales. Unas elecciones que para nosotros no tendrían validez porque no ofrecen ninguna garantía, ninguna, y no las van a ofrecer. Maduro no aceptaría jamás ir a, a unas elecciones libres y transparentes porque sabe que las pierde. Y en esas condiciones será imposible para Colombia, y pienso que para muchos países democráticos como los del Grupo de Lima, reconocer cualquier resultado. Es urgente restaurar el cauce democrático en Venezuela, porque son los ciudadanos, los ciudadanos los que están sufriendo las consecuencias de una dictadura al garete. Y una vez más, reitero que Colombia está lista para seguir brindando asistencia humanitaria a nuestros hermanos venezolanos. Me alegra profundamente, Secretario Tillerson, ratificar que a pesar de los desafíos que enfrentamos, nuestra agenda bilateral va mucho más allá de la lucha contra las drogas ilícitas y la promoción de la seguridad. Los lazos comerciales entre nuestros países son cada vez más fuertes. Desde la entrada en vigor del Tratado de Libre Comercio, la inversión de Estados Unidos en Colombia ha superado los 2.3 billones de dólares. Más de 230 empresas de Estados Unidos se encuentran instaladas hoy en nuestro país. Y nos alegra ver que cada día más productos colombianos están llegando al mercado de los Estados Unidos. A noviembre del año pasado, Colombia exportó a Estados Unidos 3.730 millones de dólares en bienes no minero energéticos. Y queremos que cada vez más empresas estadounidenses hagan negocios con Colombia, inviertan en nuestro país. El sector privado juega un papel clave en el impulso del comercio y la inversión. Y por eso valoramos mucho el papel del U.S. Colombia Business Council, que reúne a 40 de los presidentes más importantes de las empresas de los dos países. Por otra parte, espacios como el diálogo de alto nivel han dejado resultados en materia de cooperación en temas claves como la energía, la educación, el desarrollo rural, la ciencia y la tecnología. Colombia está comenzando a aprovechar todo su potencial. Nos falta un largo camino por recorrer, pero tenemos avances muy importantes en temas cruciales como la lucha contra la pobreza, el desarrollo de la infraestructura, 
el crecimiento de nuestra economía. El mundo está descubriendo nuestro país. El año pasado recibimos casi 6 millones de visitantes, más de 470 mil de ellos de los Estados Unidos. Queremos seguir avanzando por la senda del desarrollo y un elemento muy importante es ese proceso de nuestro ingreso a la OSD. Y le agradecemos al secretario Tillerson su apoyo para completar nuestro proceso de ingreso. Colombia y Estados Unidos compartimos los valores de la democracia y de las libertades que nos dejaron nuestros padres de las respectivas patrias, así como el interés de consolidar una región cada vez más próspera, cada vez más segura. Tenemos una agenda amplia y diversa y esperamos seguir trabajando con usted, con la administración del presidente Trump, para profundizar aún más nuestra gran relación, una relación que más que aliados y socios, también es de amigos. Una vez más, secretario Tillerson, gracias, gracias por su visita y por el apoyo permanente y decidido de los Estados Unidos, de los Estados Unidos por el futuro de Colombia. Y nuevamente, bienvenido a esta nuestra parte. Gracias. Well, first, uh, allow me to thank you, President Santos, for the kind welcome I've received in Colombia and for the opportunity for us to have such a, a meaningful meeting and an exchange on uh, views on a number of important issues. And it's uh, truly a pleasure to be in Colombia uh, to visit you today. The United States knows in Colombia we have first and foremost a partner who shares our democratic values and also a partner that is very capable as well. And I'm grateful for this opportunity to, to say a few words about our priorities and the things that we talked about today that are important in the bilateral relationship. Uh, we did discuss our concerns about the, the surge in coca cultivation and cocaine production in Colombia. But the President also gave me a very good report of the steps that are being taken, the progress that's being made. And he just spoke too much of that, and we were quite encouraged by what we hear. And we will continue to work with Colombia to support these efforts uh, where we can be of assistance as well. This is a shared challenge for both of our nations as well, to work together to undermine the transcriminal organizations that create the networks that are devastating for citizens in Colombia and they're devastating to the American people as well. And so we look forward to continuing that cooperation. As you highlighted, we have had many, many years of joint law enforcement efforts and have very strong laws in Colombia that help us uh, deal with those who are apprehended as well. And we thank you for that. The U.S. government does continue to support Colombian police and military forces, having trained over 13,000 law enforcement here in the hemisphere as well. And we appreciate what Colombia has done for Central America as well as you, uh, as you mentioned too. Colombia has been a key player in the hemisphere's efforts to restore democracy in Venezuela and the president spoke extensively about that and we had a very extensive exchange on how we can work together along with others in the region uh, through the Lima group, ultimately through the OAS, to restore democracy in Venezuela. And this, this is our only objective, is to see Venezuela return to its constitution, return its duly elected assembly, and to hold free and fair elections and give the Venezuelan people the, the right for their voices to be heard in elections. Uh, we are all heartbroken by what we see happening in Venezuela, such a great country, and we are also heartbroken to see the impact it's having on Colombia. And we appreciate Colombia's efforts to deal with the situation of so many Venezuelans seeking refuge here in Colombia as the situation in Venezuela continues to deteriorate. Uh, we will continue to work as partners in seeking a solution to uh, that tragedy that we're all uh, watching unfold in Venezuela. I also want to note our appreciation uh, for Colombia's full support uh, on our concerns about the nuclear weapons programs of North Korea and the DPRK. And we appreciate that Colombia sent a representative to the Vancouver meeting in Canada this past month. And there was important participation on the part of Colombia to support 
that international effort and that joint statement, which was very clear as to the desire of the entire international community that North Korea denuclearize and give up their nuclear weapons. And finally, I do want to <clears throat> state again, we support Colombia's accession to the OECD and have underlined our commitment in helping Colombia complete and implement the technical requirements to qualify for membership in the OECD. And we have closed uh, just about all of the technical issues we've committed uh, that we will continue to work with Colombia to close all remaining issues. And we know the urgency. The President has spoken very clear on this, and it is our intention to continue to be engaged, and, uh, and we'll close out the remaining issues as well. Uh, with that, Mr. President, I want to thank you again for receiving me so warmly in Columbia, and, and for the time you gave us. It was a very, very useful exchange uh, and very important for me. Thank you very much. Muy bien, a continuación se abrirá un espacio para preguntas por parte de los periodistas que nos acompañan la noche de hoy. Iniciamos con Nicolás Warams de Bloomberg. Thanks very much. My name is Nick Warams from Bloomberg. Mr. President, I have, I have a question for you first about uh, which message you listen to and, and which message you put the most emphasis on. We've heard President Trump just last week talk about threatening to cut uh, foreign assistance to countries that uh, or have uh, a drug flow flowing into the United States. Uh, he did not mention Colombia specifically, but it was very clear from his comments that Colombia was among the countries he was referring to. He said countries are laughing at the United States and that, and that aid should be uh, cut. So given the, the, the more moderate message you've heard from Secretary Tillerson today, uh, who do you believe? Uh, are you confused by these conflicting messages? And also for Secretary Tillerson, uh, given, as you mentioned, that coca production has uh, tripled in the last five years, would the U.S. consider, as the President has done now with Pakistan and others, uh, would the United States consider cutting uh, foreign assistance uh, to Colombia as a way of provoking action? Uh, and did you commit to not uh, cutting aid to Colombia in your conversation? Thank you. Well, first of all, I don't think that uh, President uh, Trump is, was referring to Colombia because Colombia is not laughing uh, at the U.S. On the contrary, we think we're working together in a problem and a challenge that needs cooperation from both countries. As I said, there would be no supply of drugs if there is no demand and there would be no demand if there is no supply. And uh, Colombia does not laugh at this uh, very important issue for us because it's a matter of national security. We have lost our best leaders, our best journalists, our best judges, our best policemen in this war against drugs. There's no other country in the world that has paid such a high price in this war on drugs that the world declared more than 40 years ago. No other country uh, compared to what Colombia has paid. So what I hope to continue is this cooperation that is needed. This is a global problem that needs a multilateral solution and cooperation between all the countries that suffer from this uh, very uh, damaging traffic of drugs. So what I heard from uh, Secretary Tillerson is that uh, the U.S. wants to continue to work together, and uh, you've seen the results. Uh, the, the amount of coca seized in the last uh, years has been uh, at record levels. This is where the drug trafficking is uh, hit with more effectiveness, and we will continue. And uh, as I said, we in Colombia, for the first time, for the first time in 35, 40 years, have a unique opportunity to reduce the production of coca, and we're working on that. 
because for the first time, thanks to the peace agreement, we can go into these areas that before were not controlled by the state and offer the peasants an alternative, a viable alternative. And they want, I've been uh, speaking to many of them, they want to get out of coca cultivation and into uh, legal crops. Well, Nick, I think uh, one of the things that's important about this relationship is because we are so close in terms of the, the bilateral partnership is that we can speak very openly and very frankly about the things that are of concern to both of us. And I know President Santos had a very uh, open and frank exchange with President Trump uh, in his visit to Washington. And we are able to speak very frankly with one another about our concerns and how can we help one another. Uh, the rapid increase in coca cultivation uh, in many respects was an unintended consequence of the peace uh, that was negotiated with uh, the FARC. And I think as the President has described now, it's, it's the long process of reversing those trends, uh, both through eradication, uh, but also importantly, as the President just mentioned, uh, programs to offer alternative crop, uh, catch crops to the farmers and the local people who have been living off of the coca uh, cultivation. And the President described a very comprehensive program to me this evening in our exchange. It appears to be having a good results. And we talked about ways that the U.S. might support that effort, as well as other ways to more efficiently uh, support their efforts to eradicate uh, coca production as well. We do know that there are obviously significant criminal organizations involved and we will continue our joint uh, work to attack these transnational criminal organizations and Colombia continues to be very aggressive in going after the leaders of these organizations and working very cooperatively with our law enforcement people as well to interdict. We also importantly in the last year have come to agreements cooperatively between the U.S., Mexico and Colombia on maritime interdiction. And this is an area that's been a real, uh, we've had real obstacles in the past. And through joint efforts with Mexico, the U.S., Colombia, we now have agreements that are allowing us to be much more aggressive at uh, interdicting routes of transportation along the Pacific, in particular maritime routes. So I think what you see is uh, President Trump has made this a high priority of his, uh, both in terms of addressing the supply, but as you know, he's made it a high priority to acknowledge that the U.S. is the market, we are the demand, we are the consumer, and the President has put in place a very comprehensive program at drug demand reduction as well. And so I think what's important is the way we're now approaching this is to recognize we need to work on the demand side of this, we need to work on interdicting uh, more cash that flows back to supplying these illicit activities, and we need to do more to interdict weapons they go into the hands of the criminal organizations while working closely with the, the neighboring countries who are suffering from uh, the, the criminal activity that's associated with the production uh, of these illicit drugs and the transportation of those. I think our expectation is that Columbia is going to make significant progress this year in reversing these trends. And we want to support that reversal. We want to make that sustainable. And we want to ultimately win this war that has been underway for so long. Uh, so that's what we're focused on, is how can we turn the trend around, how can we be supportive. And we're going to continue to work closely through our law, joint law enforcement, our intel sharing, and other programs to support uh, gaining on this problem here in Colombia. Muy bien, continuamos con Luis Eduardo Maldonado de Noticias Caracol. Señor Tillerson, eh, reconoce el gobierno de Estados Unidos que es el mayor eh, consumidor de drogas en el mundo. Pero ¿qué es lo que está pasando? ¿Cuál, eh, ¿En qué está fallando el gobierno de los Estados Unidos? ¿Por qué no han sido capaces de disminuir el consumo de drogas? Y habló usted de reciprocidad. Cuando dice eso, ¿a qué se refiere? Eh, ¿Más ayuda económica? ¿En concreto qué es? Well, the U.S. certainly does recognize that we're the largest consumer of drugs because we had 65,000 deaths in the United States last year that were related to drug consumption, uh, 65,000. So we need no reminders uh, of the fact that 
drug consumption is a serious problem in the United States. And as I said, that's why the President has tackled this with new initiatives at drug reduction. Uh, some of this has to get at how do people, how do they find their entryway into addiction and interdicting that as well. Uh, so we certainly are committed to undertaking the effort to reduce that drug uh, demand in the U.S. Our journey, too, will likely be a long one to win this battle as well. Uh, in terms of assistance, it's, it's the same assistance we've been providing for some time in law enforcement, uh, in terms of providing some capabilities with uh, information sharing and finding how can we best support the effort here to eradicate and also dismantle the networks themselves. Bien, continuamos con Dave Clark de AFP. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, uh, Secretary Tillerson. I'm David Clark from AFP. Uh, Secretary uh, Tillerson, until yesterday, you'd said the time was not right for U.S. officials to sit down with North Korea. Since then, both, uh, both yourself and Vice President Pence have said, well, let's see. Uh, they're talking about the, the, you're talking about the week ahead uh, in Pyeongchang. What has changed uh, until yesterday, and what is it that you're hoping to see? Thank you. Well, nothing's really changed other than the, uh, the President has asked the Vice President to lead the U.S. delegation, official delegation, to the opening ceremonies of the Olympics, to be there to support a very successful Olympics being hosted by our ally, South Korea, and also support a great U.S. Olympic team that's going to be marching into that stadium. Uh, hundreds of young athletes are realizing their dream to compete at the Olympic level, and, and uh, and we anticipate the Vice President being there will result in more gold medals, obviously. Uh, but also, I mean, as you well know, and it's well known, uh, through the dialogue between South Korea and North Korea, North Korea is participating in, in the Olympics as well. So we don't know what, what might present itself, and that's why, again, I, I, I think we just say we'll see. You know, we'll see what happens. Y finalmente escucharemos a Francis Sepúlveda de CME. Buenas noches, secretario Tillerson. Dos preguntas. La primera, sobre Venezuela. ¿Ustedes dos están de acuerdo en que el manejo que le está dando el presidente Maduro a la crisis no está bien? Pero quiero preguntarle de qué manera Estados Unidos se compromete realmente con ayuda, recursos a Colombia, que es el país que más afectado está siendo por esta crisis que están viniendo los venezolanos a buscar ayuda precisamente y que Colombia le ha dado esa mano, pero que también eh, corresponde a una de responsabilidad en materia económica y necesita, pues, según lo dice la canciller, recursos de organismos internacionales. Quiero preguntarle qué compromisos tiene precisamente Estados Unidos. Y segundo, ¿queda satisfecho o conforme con los resultados de erradicación de sustitución de cultivos ilícitos que acaba de presentar el presidente Juan Manuel Santos? ¿Y queda o no superada esa advertencia que alguna vez hizo el presidente Donald Trump de una desertificación a Colombia por esta lucha contra las drogas? Gracias. Well, with respect to the impact that the Venezuelan uh, situation is having on Colombia, we spoke to that earlier in my comments, as did uh, President Santos. Uh, we are looking at uh, resources that we had earmarked to address humanitarian situations inside of Venezuela. Uh, our ability to provide that aid to Venezuela has not been easy because of the situation. So we're going to look at what we have available and some of that may be redirected to serve Venezuelans who, are, who have had to leave and are here in Colombia. We discussed that tonight and we'll be in consultation with the President and his team as to whether what we are able to do uh, would be useful. And uh, <clears throat> we recognize that it is putting a burden on Colombia as well. And in terms of the eradication and the crop substitution program, again, I was, I was very encouraged to hear uh, what was discussed in our meeting, in our bilateral meeting, and obviously results are what matter. You know, in the end we need to see the results, we need to see the trends reversing, we need to see the number of crops, on, a number of acres or hectares under cultivation going down, we need to see the seizures going up, and we need to see all of the metrics, and we talked about important ways to measure uh, whether we're gaining on this, we need to see those metrics going in the correct way. And that's all President Trump wants as well. And I think what 
Uh, he was uh, communicating is how serious he sees this problem and how seriously he takes uh, the steps to reverse these trends. And, and he clearly is very interested and will be following the results. And, and that's what matters is the results. Muy bien, de esta manera finaliza esta declaración conjunta. Agradecemos al señor Secretario de Estado de los Estados Unidos y al señor Presidente de la República. A todos ustedes, gracias por su asistencia y a los televidentes, gracias por acompañarnos en esta transmisión especial de la Presidencia de la República. Feliz noche para todos.